So welcome, James. Today on Metal Rules, we're going to be speaking with James Durbin of American Idol fame about his new project, Clean Break, that features some iconic and legendary uh, musicians, Robert Sweet, uh, Perry Richardson, Mike Flintz, and their album is coming uh, out July 8th, and it's called Coming Home. Thank you so much for taking the time. I appreciate it. Of course. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm digging this album. It's great. Really enjoying it. Thank you. Glad to hear that. Yeah, it's been it's been great to hear what people have thought about this. I mean, we've been living with it for a number of months now, and uh, it's nice to get back into it, listen to it again ourselves, and okay. you know, fall back in love with it, and uh, and and hear about how people are enjoying it. It's been really great. Well, I'm definitely enjoying it. You know, like being all busy musicians and in active bands. Um, were you guys all in a room together writing and recording this or did you do it all remotely? All remotely. The only time we got in a room together was to uh, shoot the music videos. Wow. Which was, wow. yeah, it was crazy. I mean, I've, I've done records like that before. Most of actually all of my last album, Durban the Beast Awakens, um, drums and, and bass and everything was done remotely from uh, the different guys that played on that, Barry Sparks and Mike Vanderhul and, and then I recorded all my my guitars remotely and and uh, all my different lead guitar players that uh, flew in their tracks, you know, same thing. Yeah. So no stranger to it. It's it's kind of the uh, I don't know. It works. It works. It definitely works. Was that a result of COVID or was that just, you know, you guys being active musicians and always on the road touring and busy? It was definitely both. It was definitely both. I mean, for the case of Durbin, it was COVID. Um for clean break i mean i live in california um mike flintz lives in new jersey i believe perry lives in south carolina and i'm not sure where robert lives on the moon <laughs> <laughs> with his wife um but yeah uh so you know that that plays a big role in it and then our producer alessandro he's based in italy yep you know so <laughs> we were all giving our tracks uh, and sending them to Italy. I would have loved a, uh, you know, an all expenses paid vacation, uh, not vacation, um, recording trip to mm -hmm. Italy to, uh, you know, get the band in the studio with the, uh, with the producer and uh, songwriter and all that. That would have been fun. So how does it all come together when everybody's working remotely? Who starts off with the riff? Who starts off with the song? How does it all come together? From well, I mean, different different strokes for different folks and and songs um for a few of the songs i wrote a uh, hundred percent just sitting here mm -hmm. with my you know lore my trusty the lord guitar and my vht amps um and and my lewitt audio microphones um <laughs> plugs you. plugs plugs uh free yeah. stuff woo thank you humble humble um and i wrote a couple i wrote the um the song that we named the band after clean break i wrote before the fall and i um i, I wrote both of those just myself and then a co-write with uh with being dream forever with alessandro dovecchio and and martin anderson um and so yeah uh the rest of them were written by different writers or alessandro with mike flintz um contributed a couple i believe and then mm -hmm. uh yeah and then just outside writers that alessandro worked with and i've done that sort of thing in the past um with you know my first uh three albums two and a half first two and a half albums um writing with different people and and also um just getting songs from songwriters that are like eh, i like that song i could see myself you know <laughs> i could see that taking space on my album yeah yeah, I was going to ask you about that because you've had some big name writing partners in your career on those three albums prior. Um, you seem to have it down pat creatively. Um, is it a challenge to work in these different settings all the time? Uh, I don't necessarily think so. I mean, the challenge is just doing it and coming up with something good or at least mm -hmm. something that you think is good. Um, the challenge is coming up with, I mean, that's, I can write good songs all day. I don't want good songs. I want great songs. You know, I want, even if it's not a great song, I want something that you remember, something right. that sticks with you, something, I mean, you know, remember there's 12 notes. We have 12 <laughs> notes to, to mess with. And there's so many different uh, ways that you can mess with those. But, but then again, there aren't, you know, um, for them to make sense musically and to uh, stay in your ear. Um, so trying to make something that sounds 
you know, uh, working within any genre, something that sounds like the genre, but also that draws from different, you know, different inspirations. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I, I enjoy all the different ways. I think mostly I enjoy the feeling that you get when you've written the song yourself yeah. and you're like, can't stop listening to it and can't find anything wrong with it that you want to change. Unfortunately, when you finally do find stuff that you want to change, it's after the album's been released. <laughs> As I found, like there's things listening to the Durban, the Beast Awakens album that I'm like, oh, there's a little fat. I can cut that. Yeah. Oh, dang. It's out. You know, like maybe we won't go back to another chorus after the solo. Maybe, you know, that's not going to work live. That's going to be, I will die if I do that. Um, so yeah, um, different things like that. But with this album, uh, I've, I've yet to find find those things and in in the sense of that uh even if i do it's it's uh, and i probably won't because there are other people's songs that they wrote and then yeah. it's up to me to uh perform them and to um you know uh have them be realized and and emote them on the album because i i really try to not just sing you know you can be given a song like you can go to karaoke and just sing a song but there's a difference between singing the song and singing the song you know, like yeah. you put the stank on it, you believe it, you put the the belief into it. And so that's I, I do enjoy that, whether it's my songs or, or songs that somebody else wrote. I think like choosing the songs and, and being a part of that uh, also goes into it, you know, because it wasn't just like, all right, these are the songs you're singing. Here's your album. Learn them. You know, then it's like, oh, this sucks. Yeah, but this is this was a really enjoyable experience. I know the same thing with presentations at work when somebody says, I, here's a deck, present it. And you're like, wait a minute, I know nothing about this. I, I don't own it. <laughs> and it. It's hard to, like you said, come across and sell it. So yeah, I, I totally. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when you're writing lyrics, what do you gravitate towards subject wise? Uh, these days I gravitate towards being, I don't know, putting, putting uh, a layer of truth um but obscuring it if that makes sense like if if you work in photoshop you can lay a picture and then you can do like you can put another picture over it and then make it like you can mess with the transparency of the top layer mm -hmm. so that like you can still see the bottom image you know it's like a pair of sunglasses you know if they're really dark or like tint on a window you can still see out of it but it's it it's it's darker you know it's uh there's a little layer of mystery to it it's not so much just like this you know it's yeah. it's yeah i don't know yeah it's not, yeah i try and give it some soft no that's pretty cool it's not a, as obscure or difficult as david lee roth to understand <laughs> right 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 exactly yeah it's definitely hot it's shoe it's running down the avenue right right hot shoe that was a hot shoe that line bugs me. I hate it. I hate that he's line. Got a, he's got hot, a shoe. Um, hot shoe. Hot shoe. Full bug tilt was always like, what is he talking about with full, full bug tilt? What is that? You know, anything off pretty much dagger down that wasn't the cover song. Yeah. Right. Right. It's 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 a little tough. I'm uh, I'm a I'm a Hagar fan. I'm a Hagar I, guy. Uh, I'm always been a Dave Lee Roth. That's what I grew up with. So that was not that I don't like dislike Sammy, but I, I my Van Halen has to be Dave Lee Roth. Alex Grassi, when I was with Quiet Riot, uh, we had a very heated discussion in an airport and he just turns to some random guy sitting there and he's like, Van Halen, Roth or Hagar? The guy's like, huh? He says it again. He's like, Roth or Hagar? He's like, Roth, of course. I was like, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. That's all good. Yeah, it made me feel real bad about it. But <laughs> I've 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 drank with Sammy. I Have would you? never I would never want to drink with David Lee Roth. I just feel like it'd be too stressful. <laughs> he's I, I've met him once or twice. He's he's a pretty nice guy. He's, yeah. I've met Sam. I, I've interviewed Sammy in the past. He was funny. He was a really funny guy. Kept me laughing the whole interview. It was about his book. It was just great, great interview. Um you know what I loved about the CD is that your 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 voice is such a unique stamp on this. It really, I think, was the really nice ribbon around this whole all the music 
and all the performances. I think it really tied it in nicely and really added a great element to it. So kudos to you on that. Did you, you did you do anything different for this album vocally, maybe that you haven't done on any of your previous records? Um, I mean, it's every record that I do, I feel like I access a different place in my voice or at least mm -hmm. try to it's that patty labelle thing i love like her voice she just but her voice changes in a song you can be listening to one song and and it'll start she'll sound with like a and then by the end of it you know yeah and like and and everything in between and like operatic and metal and like screaming and like and just like soaring and it's all there and and i don't know i coming off the heels of Derp and the Beast Awakens, my solo album that preceded it, it's, I feel like I was laying in a little bit more to the, I don't know, the, that, that, that vibe with that record. Um, and it was an exploration and it'll, it'll evolve. Uh, and I feel like Clean Break is an evolution of that, that it's, I don't know, it's, it's a little bit more just what I sound like in a way i don't know but i i use different parts of my voice for different songs you know if if um i don't know it's 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 not a conscious thing I, i'm becoming aware of it now that you mentioned it and i'm thinking about it and i'm like uh oh <laughs> uh, oh i'm doing it uh, involuntarily oh no yeah, let's, let's I, I thought this make one... sure it's good but but i do appreciate that that that's it's it's cool because the voice is an instrument so i guess if it's anything it's that i blend i love to blend with other singers mm -hmm. um which is why i do a bunch of private stuff and 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 kind of hire out work sometimes uh with different bands and i i just enjoy getting in there and harmonizing with them and hearing the tonality of their voices or if you're if i'm singing something against a guitar that's doing something that's you know harmonizing with me or what have you i i try and vocally match that tone i just i i love doing that i love trying to blend voices i love doing it in musical theater when i was in high school and and like you'd be singing with a different person and you have to match it and blend with it and like make it enjoyable to listen to so i guess it's it's if i had to say it was you know anything or make up an answer uh, on the spot i'd say that it was yeah probably just trying to blend with with the music I actually thought you were singing in a lower register. And I thought, like you said, more natural. And yeah, there's definitely some lower registers. The higher screams less, the less screaming on this yeah. record than, than any other record I've done. And they're sprinkled in. And even when they are sprinkled in, you know, Alessandro kind of like mixed those parts lower even. So it's, it's less of a, it's less focus on that. It's definitely in here. It's definitely yeah. on display here, but it's, it's as I find myself doing, even as I get older, is um try and be more tasteful with it and mm -hmm. use it less because i used it a lot i used it a lot i've i've used it you know i don't want to like use all of my screams in 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 more ways than one like i don't want to completely thrash that part of my voice to where i'm not able to do it because i still want to be able to hit those but i i enjoy having them not be as necessarily as important of a focus and as important of a thing to base the entire um vocal melody around no yeah, that's great and I, I i think you nailed it i think it really envelops the guitar playing and it doesn't overpower anyone your your vocal instrument doesn't overpower any of the other instruments so Thank you. i think it really worked well um tell me about the importance of finding your own voice as a solo artist I mean, it's definitely important, <clears throat> but I mean, if you know who you are and if who you are is complicated, then it's, you know, then it's like, if you know that going into it, like I try not to be surprised that my idol record was, I mean, and, and it's who I've been at the time that I've done albums is, you know, uh, Memories of a Beautiful Disaster is extremely different from Celebrate. Mm -hmm. celebrates extremely different from riot on sunset riot on sunset's extremely different from homeland uh you know homeland is extremely different from uh from durbin the beast awakens 
you know, and then everything in between all those, all the different side projects and the Quiet Riot records and the Hollywood Scars stuff and the different things I've done, uh, Homeland Revival or release something with a buddy or, you know, sung on different things is all very, very, very different. So I think if you know that your voice is unsilenced and un, not unsilenced, but unsatisfied with just one thing and one thing only, then that's okay. You know, that, that's yeah. uh, your voice is many voices. Again, back to the Patti LaBelle thing, your voice is many voices. And, and if you, you know, that's something you enjoy, don't be afraid to uh, do what you enjoy because that's what you should be doing anyway. If you just enjoy playing heavy metal and screaming, you know, hell yeah, that's awesome. Absolutely. Do what you absolutely love and, yeah. and don't be ashamed about it whatsoever. You know, I, I love and enjoy and listen to like, so many different kinds of music and there's very few that i found where i listen to different artists in the genre where i can't find anything that i you know really really love about it you know it's it's expression is expression so there's something everywhere i'm not a big bob dylan fan but there's things about certain moments in there that i'm like oh that's for me mm -hmm. oh that's absolutely for me you know, I, I didn't get the Beatles for a long time and I love the Beatles. I didn't get um, just so many different things uh, that I'm just like, wow, that's really cool. And I've been really lucky to be a part of this, uh, this work that I've been doing with uh, the fitness company Peloton on this program called Lane Break. And which is funny, clean break and lane yes. break going on at the same time. There was no relation between them or no inspiration of like clean break was written because lane break, the program changed names a bunch of times. But um, this is, I listen to music all day and create levels uh, to be played on <laughs> this, uh, on this program. And so um, I'm listening to all different kinds of music all day, every day. Like today was Kelly Clarkson and, uh, Rufus De Soul and Junior Senior and uh, and also Otis Redding and the Spinners and tomorrow's gonna be, you know, uh, I've done Metallica levels with them and and share. Uh, I did share last week. I'm probably doing a 30 minute Madonna compilation tomorrow. <laughs> so it's like, of course, there's things in there where I'm just like, oh, dang, dang, I don't want to be here right now. I don't want to be doing this. Oh my gosh! And then by the end of the day, I'm like. Yeah, just singing it and some of the situations like i did like a i think it was like a k-pop level or something and downloaded one of the songs i was like that's good i like it like there's something in there where like it's again it's the 12 notes we have 12 notes to work with as as songwriters and, and singers and sometimes somebody in another genre does something with those 12 notes where you're like oh if i made that minor and flip that and flip the the chord progression around ooh, and made it halftime oh my gosh you know there's things that inspire you in all different places where you know you can um take that as an inspiration and and see where it takes you that so i good. yeah I, I love music and your yeah. your voice is very versatile you're Thank very you. fortunate a lot of people can't do what you do the high register the low register the screams you know, sometimes people are just one trick ponies and you're, you know, you're the full package when it comes to that. So kudos to you. Thank you. Thank you. I work for it. I definitely work at it. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. And it's, yes. it's not, it's not always easy, especially no. getting lows, uh, uh, trying to get a, a lower octave. Really? And it's easier right now because I've been doing interviews for almost three hours. So I can, you know, I can drop down, <laughs> drop down to like old school triple H voice, you know, yeah, yeah. get real like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what's up, brother? Yeah, we're out here. We're talking about clean break. It's a great record. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> it's, you know, and being a voiceover artist too, that helps. But oh yeah, that'll do it. All sorts. You know, I saw on your website that um you have a band, Lost Boys. What what's the story behind that? Oh, uh, Lost Boys is my uh 70s, 80s cover group. We've been playing for like six years. Wow. It's the longest band I've ever held together with with, with all the same people, and yeah. they're they're older than me. And and uh, but we, we got put together through a, a private party that hired me, and I was like, um, yeah, do you want me to play solo acoustic? And they're like, no, we've got a band. We'd like you to play with them. I was like, oh, who's the band? Uh, you know, because I live in in my hometown and know kind of like 
music scene and <laughs> they just said oh it's it's my brother's friends and i was like oh god my brother's friends band um <laughs> great yeah totally let's do it um it was a good paying gig so <laughs> I, I went with it and uh i couldn't say no and i'm glad i didn't say no because we've been playing together for like i said like going on six years and we've got a good uh hold of our local scene for you know the main city events that we play annually and it's you know it's fun and as long as it continues to be fun we'll continue to do it yeah. Yeah. That's great. Good for you. You know, speaking of that, I'm um, saying, not saying no, I interviewed Dave Elson a long mm. time ago. And in his book, he talks about that. His life improved drastically when he started saying yes to things and not yeah, exactly. saying no and accepting opportunities and challenges. And it, it just kind of like one door just kept opening to another door. I always found that interesting. And I, I tell that to my daughter all the time too. I said, you know, don't be so closed minded, you know, explore the opportunity, hear what people have to say. And if it's, you know, I'm not saying anything dishonest or illegal or immoral, yeah. but, <laughs> yeah. you know, just, you know, sometimes just go with it, give it a try. You have nothing to lose, you know, and uh, that's kind of, I've taken that advice to heart. And so it's good to hear you say you do it too, to some degree. Yeah, I definitely tried to, you know, I, I, my wife got me, matthew mcconaughey's book green lights for christmas and mm -hmm. i'm not like a big matthew mcconaughey fan you know i don't know a bunch a list of all his movies and things but i read this book and and gosh i i couldn't put it down i could yeah, not no put it down saying. and um and just i try and look at now since having read it i try and look at um different moments in life and kind of judge them on the scale of like is this a yellow light is this a red light there's very few times that a a red light is actually a red light because you look at it and you're like this seems like it was a full stop it seems like it was a full reset but <laughs> in reality and in actuality this was a yellow light this was i just had to slow down but i had to stay my momentum i had to keep hustling i had to keep I've, I've never committed to quitting. I've, I've said I'm, I'm done with music. I've said I'm done. I'm done touring. I'm done doing this. I will do anything else. I will deliver furniture. Like I, I don't want this anymore. And, but I've, I've always, there, there's, there's more hustle in me than there is quit. Even when the hustle is depleted, there's, there's, there's more in there than there is quit um and it's it's also you know now also having the peloton thing is like oh this is great you know it's like yeah. oh uh guaranteed income every month oh hell yeah this is cool i, I can get down with this with that. you know and it's still in music and i'm happy and i work in my studio all day and and uh and it's paid training for all this you know music production stuff that i've always wanted to learn so um it's super rad getting to do that too and i every weekend i'm playing shows and i'm doing all sorts of different things with a bunch of different people and, and a bunch of private gigs and and it's just life is good we're that's great we live okay. in you know in, in our hometown uh our home county we have three beautiful kids we've been together for 14 years we bought a house we bought a puppy we flushed a <laughs> fish down the toilet this morning but other than that everything <laughs> is really good <laughs> chickens are laying eggs and and Great. you know yeah, yeah. all good i, I want to be respectful <laughs> of your time and i have one more question for you um it's about you know idol you know S stephen tyler was so stoic many of the times when you were performing you couldn't get a read i couldn't get a read off of him did he like you did he not like you what were you thinking when you were up on stage singing to him and he's that stoic i mean and maybe it's just my imagination but what, what were you thinking uh first thought that was always going through my head was like oh my god that's steven tyler yeah i'm standing here singing for steven tyler he's sitting there listening to me sing yeah day after day um i don't know like i i feel like at first he was like really intrigued by me and then i feel like at a certain point he was 
Um, he wanted something else from me that I wasn't delivering, mm -hmm. but I was also trying to stay in the competition. You know, like these yeah. are like conflicting things, but also like he never really, he did tell me occasionally, he said, don't get too poppy on me. He did it after I sang uh, Bon Jovi, which was pretty early on uh, yeah. in the actual like live rounds. Um, yeah, he's, don't get too poppy on me. Um, and then I ended up actually going heavier and, and was able to, you know, come up with the give metal a chance thing. And, and that worked and that ran its course and that uh, established me in the uh, canonical American Idol folklore uh, of being the, uh, you know, the metal guy. Yeah. So that's cool. That is really cool. I sang Judas Priest on on American Idol for the first time. I got actual inspiration from watching uh, Eric Grunwall, um, who's also on Frontiers, uh, or was, I don't know if he still is, now that he's with Skid Row, but um, I, I watched his, his uh, Idol Sweden run and was inspired by him doing Iron Maiden's Run to the Hills. I was mm -hmm. like, Dude, he did a Maiden song, and then I was looking down the list of cleared songs, and there was one Judas Priest song and it was, you've got another thing coming. And I had looked through that list like five times and could not find the song that I wanted to do. And I looked through it one more time and it's always the last time it's, yeah. it's, it's in the last place you look uh, every time and you can guarantee that. And, um, and I saw that song and I went to the, the producers right away and was like, found my song. They're like, what the, is a judas priest <laughs> you know like i was like nigel you're british you don't know who judas priest is are you just copping out are you just pretending you're trying to be cool in front of the other producers um i was like you're old gay and british how do you not know who judas priest is come on man uh, <laughs> uh he's not gay um uh, as as i later found out as i just remembered i was like is nigel gay got all the signs nope he has a son but he might be, you never know. Yeah. Uh, anyway, love you, Nigel. Nothing um, wrong with it either way, right? <laughs> no, no. Nothing wrong with being gay and having a son. I, it's, it's, of course it's possible. Um, I, I, I have friends that are gay that have sons. Um, and anyway, um, uh, yeah, I, I found that song and, and that's really what kind of like pushed it. So I'm stoked for the time on idol and the opportunity on idol and and uh and all of it like i still have my got my season 10 right here yes. or our, our tour photo there and yeah, then i've got cool. a, a a creepy doll in a case that somebody made of me <laughs> uh and then i've got like a crocheted doll over here of me that i got on the yeah idol that's, tour. I just keep that's little, scarier too i keep little ideas yeah it's a little uh little voodoo pin cushion yeah i was gonna wonder if that was a pin, voodoo pin doll. yeah my wife's always asked she's like Every, every once in a while she'll come in here she'll be like you sure there's not a camera in that thing <laughs> they make them really small i think i see a little glare coming off the eyeball like sure there's not a camera in there that's <laughs> pretty sure it's, it's well listen james i want to thank you so much for your time today it's a real pleasure speaking with you and i wish you the most success with this album i think it's great thank you so much robert i appreciate you having me and and all the kind words we're we're stoked to be doing clean break and and excited to see where it takes us if that's to live shows or more records or or what have you we're we're excited for the uh for the ride i'd love to see a live show i think it would be fantastic same here all right well take care james have a good day awesome you too appreciate bye -bye. you bye